Hello everyone. As you all know, this year is the 10th anniversary of Five Nights at Freddy's. And so, to celebrate, not only are we doing this FNAF week thing, <laughs> but I wanted to put out a theory out there. A theory that... No one seems to be asking, but one I feel is important to the franchise as a whole. To solve, to solve like one birthday, I've decided to solve another. I'm going, I believe I figured out when exactly the crying child gets bitten. And I know that, in, I know about saying, I know it's 1983, but when exactly in 1983? That's what we're solving in this video. Well, I suppose the 8-bit minigames could give us a bit of a clue as to when this takes place. And judging in the environment with the green grass and the flowers and plants everywhere, I think it's safe to assume that this takes place somewhere around spring or summer. But I think we can get a bit more specific than spring or summer. We see throughout the mini games that a lot of the kids are out and they're out on the streets, all just hanging out. And a lot of people use this to say it takes place around the summertime. And it's not a bad thing, but in the 80s, it was actually completely normal for kids to touch grass all the time after school. Pretty much any time ever. In fact, I think this might actually be the case. With one piece of evidence. The empty sister's room. While many theorists use this to assume that it means Elizabeth died first, I beg to differ. I think the answer is a bit more simpler than we're all making it out to be. You see, we see throughout the mini games that the crying child himself is obviously smaller than a lot of the bullies. Makes sense. It's a common way of showing power in pop culture. But at the same time, he also feels a lot bigger than the other kids do. As well as there are kids that are around his size, implying that he might be a bit older than we think. So. Here's what I think is going on here. It starts out when Michael comes home from high school. He gets out first and uses decides to find his prank on his brother. And the brother, who is in middle school, comes home and gets, of course, pranked by his brother or scared, whatever happens that day. And the minigame ends before Elizabeth, who is in elementary school at the time, comes home. And Obviously, it witnesses everything. So, the empty sister's room isn't empty because she's dead. It's empty because she hasn't come home yet. Simple as that. Yeah. So, using this, we can make a, we can notice a pretty clear pattern with all these mini games. Notice how there's six of them. They're referred to as end of night mini games, but the first one takes place before any of the nights actually begin, implying that this is a week. Starting on Monday, and then going Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Which, it is normal for a lot of kids to have their birthdays on Saturday. Their parties, at least. I mean, this also makes an interesting parallel with FNAF 6. In that game, we're molested by, we're molested and scared by a lot of, a lot of people, oh. mostly our family, interestingly enough, until tragedy strikes at what we can assume is Fred Bears on day six. Symmetry, my friend. A 
Okay, okay. So to recap, there's a bunch of kids out after school, and one of them gets scared by his brother, which is obviously the one we focus on. Which means, and based on the environment, that means we're going to need a month where school is still in session, but temperature is starting to get hotter. I think there are two months that could best fit this. Those either be May or June. And I'm personally leaning towards May for multiple reasons. For starters, Friday in May 1983 was the 13th, which as we all know, is kind of a bad off day. May 13th is also seen to be when Charlie was born in the books. And while it's not clear whether that's still the case in the games, I find it interesting how it's possible that she could have died around this week for her birthday, and then the crime track the week before or week after, depending on what you believe. I'm fine with either interpretation personally. And this is a bit less evidence, but more so implications if this theory is true. But it means that the MCI can't happen before Crime Child's death, as it's said to take place around June 26th. Unless it's, of course, the year before, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So. To our question at the top of the video, when was the crime child born? Sometime in May 1983, which is either the 7th or the 21st, according to the evidence. Thank you everybody so much for watching this video. Well, I think there is a lot of evidence for it to be around here. There is also, more recently, a lot of evidence to suggest it takes place in October, strangely enough. But, for all, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.